So we've talked about one resistor in a circuit. Well, what about if we have several resistors in a circuit? Let's draw our circuit again here, but instead of having one resistor, I'm gonna put another one in there as well, in series. Since I have two resistors, I'm gonna call them R1 and R2. And I'm gonna put a voltmeter across each of those. So I can tell how much energy is being lost across each of those. Now I'm going to call the voltage supplied by the battery V tot or V total. You should realize that if we had a voltmeter across here, then that is going to measure V total as well because the electrons, the charge is only losing its energy across these two resistors here. It's not losing it anywhere else. So if you put a voltmeter across both of them, it should be the same as the voltage supplied by the battery. So let's say that we had six volts to play with. Let's say that six volts was supplied by this battery here. If we had identical resistors here, it stands to reason that we would lose three volts worth of that six volts across the first one and another three volts across the other one. And that is true. So we can come up with a rule for resistors in series that V total equals V1 plus V2 plus the voltages or the PDs across any other components that you want to add in as well. But we're just going to deal with two for now. So we see that voltage is shared. If the resistors are the same, then that means that they all get an equal share of the total voltage. But we know that circuits are just one complete loop of electrons. So it doesn't matter where you are in the circuit, whether you're here or here or here or here or here. If you're measuring how fast the electrons are flowing around the circuit, they're all going to be flowing the same speed. So we can say that current is the same. If that's the case, then we can say that the total voltage is equal to the current, which is the same for all of them, times the total resistance. This is just Ohm's law, V equals IR. If that's true, then the way that we add up the resistances has to be the same that we add up the voltages as well. So the way that we find out the total resistance of resistors in series is just by adding them up. But what about if we're talking about resistors in parallel? So here we have a circuit, and we have a branch coming off there, and we have another branch coming off here. And we have R1, and we have R2. I could put an ammeter in there, I could put an ammeter in here, and an ammeter in here too. I'm going to call this A1, I'm going to call this A2, I'm going to call this A total. Hopefully you know that if you have components in parallel, they all have the same voltage across them. And that's super duper important. So in series, voltage is shared, but the current is the same for all. In parallel, the voltage is the same for them. So that must mean that the current is shared. When the electrons get to this point here, the electrons have two routes to choose from. Either they can go through this resistor here or this resistor here. If you can see that the electrons now have a choice, so half of the electrons can go through R1, half the electrons can go through R2, that might give you a clue as to what the overall resistance is. So we can say that the current through the first resistor using Ohm's law is just going to be V divided by R1. Don't need to call it V1 because I know they're all going to be the same. For I2, it's going to be a similar story. And we know that the total current is going to be equals to the voltage divided by the total resistance. So if we know that the total current is made up of the current going through the first resistor plus the current going through the second resistor, then we find out that this is the case. Getting rid of the Vs because we can cancel them out, we end up with 1 over the total resistance is equals to the reciprocal of all the resistances in parallel. So if you were trying to find out the total resistance in this circuit, you'd do one divided by the first resistance plus one divided by the second resistance, press equals, and then do one divided by the answer to get your total resistance. So you should be able to see from this equation and the fact that current is shared between resistors in parallel that the overall total resistance of two or more resistors in parallel is actually going to be lower than any of their individual resistances. So if you've only got 50 ohm resistors but you want a resistance of 25 ohms, all you have to do is put two of them in parallel and you've got your 25 ohms. So let's have a go at a bit of a tricky question. 
What if you were given this circuit here and you were asked to find out the current in the circuit and we have a 10 ohm resistor here and we have two 50 ohm resistors here. In order to find out the total current you need to do V total equals I times R total. So therefore the total current that the current in the circuit is going to be V total divided by R total. But we've already been given so all we have to do now is find out the total resistance of the circuit in order to find out the current. So rule of thumb if you've got series and parallel you deal with the parallel first. So let's find out the total resistance of these bad boys here. We know that 1 over R total for these two is going to be 1 over 50. It's 1 over 50. That's going to give me 2 50ths or in other words 1 25th. Do 1 divided by that and we end up with an overall resistance of 25 ohms here. So now that we've found the resistance of these two combined now we need to find the resistance of everything combined. We know that this is 25 and it's in series with 10 so that means the overall complete resistance is just 10 plus 25 and that gives us 35 ohms. Now that we've got that to find out the current we do 12 divided by 35 and that gives us 0.34 amps. Potential dividers confuses the heck out of people. Let's try and simplify things. All that it is is a series circuit with two resistors in. But I'm going to draw it sideways like this. And we have two resistors, R1 and R2. Now when it comes to drawing potential divider circuits, you don't actually need to draw the battery. What you can do is just draw two rails as it were, like that. And say that this is plus 12 volts, this is zero volts down there. In other words, we know that it has to be a 12 volt supply between these two points here. Then anything attached between these two rails that carry on like that, we know that we're going to have a voltage of 12 volts across here. So this here is V total. That's the total voltage available to the two resistors in the circuit. Now let's attach two voltmeters across here. V1 and V2. Now if these resistors were identical, they could be 500 and 500 ohms, they could be 2 ohms and 2 ohms, it doesn't matter if they're identical, they're both going to get an equal share of the total voltage. And if that was the case, then we'd see 6 volts on this voltmeter and 6 volts on this voltmeter. But more often than not, these two resistances are going to be different. Let's say that we have one of these is 4 ohms, this one here is 2 ohms. Which one of these is going to have the greatest voltage across it? Well, if you think about what the whole idea of resistance is, the electrons find it harder to go through the 4 ohms, so they need more energy to get through it in order to be going at the same speed. So this R1 is going to have a greater voltage, and that's really important as a rule of thumb. Bigger resistor gets greater share of e tote. And from then on, it's just a ratio game. The ratios of the resistances is going to be equals to the ratios of the voltages. So R1 divided by R2 equals V1 divided by V2. Now let's say that we wanted to find out the voltage V2. What share of that 12 volts does that second resistor get? It's not very useful at the minute because we don't know the voltage across V1, so we have two unknowns. But instead, we're going to use the total voltage here. The other way that we can write this equation is that the share of the voltage compared to the total voltage is going to be the same as the resistance compared to the total resistance. So what do we have? V2 divided by 12, because that's the total resistance, equals 2, because that's our resistance of R2, divided by 6, because that's the total resistance of the two resistors combined. That gives us a voltage of 4 volts. And it's as simple as that. Now you might see the equation written like this instead. V out equals V in times R2 over R1 
plus R2. That's probably the way you're going to see the equation in your formula sheet. But don't be confused. This is just your total voltage. This is your total resistance. This is your R of your resistor that you're looking at. And this is your voltage of resistor that you're looking at. So let's get a little bit clever with these then. So now I have R1 and R2, but this here is a thermistor. What's going to happen as the temperature varies? Well, the resistance of this thermistor is going to change. So where can we attach a heater in this circuit to make sure that it comes on when the temperature gets too cold? So let's just think about it logically, step by step. When a thermistor gets colder, the resistance actually goes up. If the resistance of the thermistor goes up, then that means its share of the voltage also goes up. And we know that if we attach anything to something in parallel, it will get the same voltage too. Heater connected in parallel will get a voltage. And that means that it turns on. So that's one example of how we can use a potential divider with a thermistor to turn a heater on. What about if you wanted a fan to turn on instead? Well, we'd have to connect it to this one here. Let's have a think about this. Even though this fixed resistor isn't actually changing its resistance, this one is. If it gets hot, then the resistance of the thermistor goes down. Then its share of the voltage also goes down. Even though this resistor hasn't changed, it now gets a bigger share of the voltage. It gets a bigger share of the voltage, the motor gets a bigger share of the voltage, and the fan spins faster. Just goes to show that you don't have to have something connected to a thermistor or an LDR in order to change how it works. What if I wanted a circuit in a street light, which makes it come on when it gets too dark? So I have my fixed resistor, and I have my LDR there. Do I put my light bulb across the fixed resistor or the LDR? Well, see if you can figure it out using the same process that we saw just now. Pause the video if you have to. So let's have a go. If it gets darker, then that means the resistance of the LDR goes up. So that means so does its share of the total voltage. So that means if we attach a lamp, that will turn on. So that would be where we wanted to attach our lamp. So I hope that helps. If you've got any questions, or if you feel I've missed anything out, then please put in a comment down below, and I'll see you next time.